he fought to land a job three years after national service. According to him, counselors' applications to several institutions was to no avail. That's the story of 23-year-old Akwesi Botre, a university graduate. After many disappointments, he landed a job through government's flagship National Builders Corps initiative. Join News' Henry Kwesi Beidou visited Akwesi at his AMA office a year on and comes through with this report. About 100,000 graduates across the length and breadth of the country woke up one morning exactly a year ago to what has been described by many as a laudable initiative. Guess what? The nation's builders call. Jobs were made available to them. Many graduates like Akwesi Botri had stayed home idle for several years. I finished with my national service and I was looking for an avenue where I can, you know, um, further get a place to actually survive. So the, the search for job was actually Herculean. So I was, I was really, you know, going through tough times. So, and then um, I heard of the NAPCO, the, the Nation Builders Corps. So um, I saw that as a, as a great, you know, opportunity for me to apply and then, you know, further grow my future. According to him, three years after completing his national service at Carl Bank in 2017, he was unable to find a job. I was, I was really despondent um, like and I would say it actually started in my final year back in Legon and um, that sort of like discussion was always part of my um, you know like interactions with my friends on campus that uh, with the rate of un unemployment in Ghana how are we going to survive after school yeah so <laughs> And being exposed to the realities on the ground, um, I've, I've really seen that it's, it's not an easy you know, one. Now he's able to put to use the theory he was taught in the University of Ghana at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly as a NADMO administrative officer. One year on, Akwesi believes the policy has been a life changer and a stepping stone. NAPO has really given me uh, the, the platform to grow my you know, future career. And actually, it's in the field of corporate um, reporting. So um, I'm, I'm currently with, with NADMO and as part of my corporate function I do on-site reports and which is something I'm passionate um, about. So um, I think the initiative has really given me um, that urge to, um, to, to grow my career. I see it as a lifesaver because I mean when you're hopeless and you have no uh, I mean uh, way out and then you get some sort of support of course, any you know person with a pure conscience should uh, appreciate this this uh, program. It's it's really a noble one, yeah. Although Akwesi says he has received all his pending stipends, he wants the management of NAPCO to pay them regularly. Management is actually doing uh, a whole lot of um, work to ensure that all those um, with um, payment issues are sorted. And uh, I can speak to that uh, even for today, as, as we, we are speaking, uh, payment has actually started. As he spoke with me, there are smiles all over his face. For Joy News, Henry Kwesi Bedu's report. A year on into the implementation of the Nations Builders Corps, the beneficiaries are receiving praise for their competence, dedication and commitment to work. The over 100,000 workforce were deployed to work in the teaching, agriculture, information, technology support, the judiciary, revenue collection, among others. The 3 billion CDs government-funded program aims to offer temporary jobs to beneficiaries for a three-year period. Chief Executive Officer of NAPCO, Dr. Anyas Ibrahim, indicated that over 11,000 of beneficiaries have secured permanent employment. We deployed them to critical sectors of the economy. Some of the sectors we, de we deployed the workers to included education, health, agriculture, local governance, digitization projects, the revenue mobilization efforts, as well as private enterprises. So what has it been like? What have we done with the core? By its design, NAPCO was supposed to have a structure of a work and learn design. What that meant was that in recognition of the sort of deficits uh, that we had, that would created a, bra a barrier for our graduates to get into employment. Our task coming from the president was to make sure that we addressed all the deficits so that by the end of the 36-month period, the program period, 
all our NAPCO trainees will be ready uh, to be able to access employment, uh, whether in the public or the private sector. And so we guarantee for every NAPCO trainee, 24 month period of work placement and beyond, and then also a structured learning program, make sure that they were well uh, prepared and empowered to access uh, the labor market. Mr. President, I would like to put on record uh, some projects we classify as being special projects. Your NAPCO talent pool of 100,000 have served a lot of your cherished initiatives. In fact, special mention can be made of the boost that we give to initiatives such as the One District, One Factory, initiatives such as the planting for food and jobs, where we have a lot of our NAPCO trainees working within the seed and fertilizer. And also, if you look at the revenue mobilization effort, and we're privileged to see the NAPCO uh, customs intents outside, that are using 10% of our NAPCO workforce to be able to uh, make sure that uh, we drive up the revenue uh, mobilization effort for development in this country. Meanwhile, President Akufuado warns partner organizations working with the program to consider employees for future permanent jobs. Government is investing 3 billion Ghana C over the 36 month duration of the scheme. I urge our NAPCO trainees to continue to seize the moment and opportunities offered by the scheme to develop themselves. As a trainee, your NAPCO story must be one of continual growth. It is our hope that you transition smoothly into your desired career pathway as a result of the value addition being derived from the scheme. Thus far, the NAPCO module implementation partners have fulfilled their part of the bargain. I commend them for their partnership of the scheme and would appeal to them to recognize and reward the sacrifice made by trainees. They should be the first to be considered when opportunities for permanent employment come up. Indeed, as the economy of our nation grows rapidly, largely as a result of competent management and appropriate policies, many more employment opportunities will be generated. Through what we collectively aspire to achieve, and the steps currently being taken, I'm left in no doubt that we can be a nation reliant on the creativity, hard work, sense of enterprise, and spirit of innovation. The Judicial Service of Ghana has in its rank almost 300 NAPCO employees. And as the Supreme Court Judge Justice Samuel Mafusau reports, their output has been good. NAPCO personnel or interns are working as years Orders, secretaries, interpreters, court clerks, and those with IT skills are with our IT department helping solve IT problems in the service. The judicial service has a monitoring system that tracks the performance of NAVCO personnel. And so far, the feedback is that the majority of NAVCO personnel are committed, very, very committed, and are always engaged on their job schedule. In Accra, where the e justice program is being piloted in the court, the high court complex, NAPCO personnel with IT skills positively impacted the implementation of the e justice program. Help solve ICT problems in the courts, registries provide technical assistance and support for our ICT staff, also offer assistance during training of our staff in the course of the, of the justice program. Alongside the e-justice program is a digitization program that is being currently going ongoing at the judicial service, where the Ministry of Communication with support from the World Bank uh, is assisting the judicial service digitized by 15 million pages of court records. And I must say that personnel from NAVCO have actually supported positively the implementation of this 